The first hidden feature in the iOS 18 public beta is in the camera app. Now you can play songs in the music app and record the video at the same time. Before it would stop the music as soon as you hit the record button, but now you can play the music and record the video simultaneously. To enable it, go to the Settings app, open the camera menu, tap on Record Sound, and enable the Allow Audio Playback toggle. The next hidden iOS 18 feature is related to the Wi-Fi address. If you go into the Wi-Fi menu and tap on the eye icon next to your connected Wi-Fi network, you can see that there is a Rotate Wi-Fi address toggle. Turn it on to prevent tracking of your Wi-Fi address by changing and rotating it at various times. Also, there are a lot of hidden features in the Accessibility menu. Starting with the Motion menu, where you can turn on the Show Vehicle Motion Cues option, which places dots on your iPhone screen which may reduce motion sickness while you are on a long journey traveling through the car. The next accessibility feature is in the eye tracking menu where if you enable it, a dot appears which moves around the screen at different positions and tracks your eye movement. This tracking data is then used to control your iPhone device without touching your iPhone screen, and the menu gets selected if you stare at the same spot for a longer time. This feature will be buggy since it's in the beta version, and hopefully it will improve when the stable iOS 18 software update is released. The next hidden feature helps you to control nearby devices that are running on the same Apple account and iOS 18 version installed on it. Make sure Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is turned on on both the devices. Tap on the Control Nearby Devices menu. Select Control Nearby Devices, an iPhone or iPad will pop up depending on the device which you want to control. If you tap on it, you can check out the App Switcher, Control Center, or Trigger Siri on another device. You can even increase or decrease media volume or change tracks from the music application. The next hidden feature in the Accessibility setting is in the Music Haptics menu, where if you turn on the Music Haptics toggle, Subtle vibration haptics are turned on, which syncs with the songs played in the music application. This haptics might also come in the Spotify app in the stable iOS 18 update. But I don't think it's of any use for me since I use earbuds to listen music. And my favorite hidden accessibility feature is in the vocal shortcuts menu, where you can add actions to trigger different shortcuts like custom Siri requests. In my case, I use Siri every day to know about weather forecast for the day. So in the Siri request prompt you can type weather forecast, then you can type the word or phrase which you want to use to trigger the action, in my case I typed W update. Now speak the word or phrase for three times, so that your iPhone can recognize your voice for the action and tap on continue. Now if I speak W update, Siri is automatically triggered with the weather forecast. And I can also tap on the banner at the top to check out detailed weather analysis for the day. Instead of going into the settings app, then tap on general and scroll all the way down to shut down your iPhone. You can just swipe down from the top right for the control center and tap and hold the power icon to shut down your iPhone. Going back to the main settings page and into the battery section, if you select the charging menu, you will now be able to set the charging limit starting from 80 to 100% with 5% increments. Also, optimized battery charging option can only be used at 100% charge limit and not lower than that. If you use optimized charging option for longer duration, you may get charge limit recommendation based on your usage activity, which is a welcome feature. I like to set my charge limit at 80% since my iPhone 15 Plus has great battery life. Next hidden feature is in the search section at the top of the main settings page, where you can find suggestions based on your frequent settings activity, along with the list of recent settings history at the bottom. This feature is similar to the Siri suggestions which we get while using the spotlight search on the iPhone home screen. Next up is the calendar application, where instead of dots indicated for events in the previous iOS version, it is now replaced by tiles, stacked upon each other which you can adjust by pinching in and out as per your liking. And if you want to add an event, you can even add reminders straight from the calendar app itself, instead of going into the separate reminders app. Both the apps are now integrated with each other. Also there is a cool new UI feature added while using the FaceTime or any other apps which uses iPhone microphone and camera. 
If you swipe down for the control center and tap on the menu up top, you will notice that there is a new animation added for different audio spectrum, along with video previews with different video effects menu on the side for easy access. Speaking of control center, you continue to swipe down from the top right to access different tabs in the control pages. You can also switch between different control pages just by tapping on it. Also, there is a cool new opening and closing animation added for the flashlight icon, but the features are different for pro iPhone models. In normal iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, you can only increase and decrease the flashlight intensity by sliding up and down, but in the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max models, you can slide left and right to change the width of the flashlight to make it more narrow or wide, which I found quite annoying because the non-pro models can also get the same feature by adding it in the software update. And if you open any gaming applications on your iPhone, game mode will automatically be turned on by default, which reduces background activities and improves Bluetooth latency to improve the gaming performance on your iPhone. In iOS 18, the Photos application has got a complete makeover, and now if you open any video for preview, it plays in loop instead of playing once in previous iOS version. It also gets a new separate scroll bar at the bottom for easy video scrubbing. The next useful hidden feature is in the Notes application, where if you select the attachment icon in the new note, you can record audio directly into the Notes application. You can even add transcriptions to your audio by tapping the captions icon on the bottom left corner, which I found to be quite useful. The next feature added is in the phone application, where if you tap on the list in the recent section, it opened the contact details instead of calling it directly present in the previous iOS version. To call the contact, there is a separate icon added on the right hand side for clear call to action option. And if we move into the keypad section, the much-awaited T9 dialing feature has been added, where the contact name appears by typing initial digits. And if you tap on it, complete number gets dialed in for quick calling. And my favorite lock screen feature has been added in the iOS 18 version, where you can hide the default shortcuts completely to achieve the minimal theme I like for my iPhone 15 Plus. You can even change the default shortcuts with different shortcuts from the list to customize your iPhone lock screen as per your usage. There is also a hidden quick menu feature added for the icons on the iPhone home screen, where if you tap and hold the app, a list of icons has been added at the top. You can convert the app into widget directly from the home screen. This feature is only applicable for the apps which has widgets assigned to it. You can also hide the name of the app icons on your iPhone home screen by turning on jiggle mode, select customize menu, and tap on the large menu to hide the app names on the home screen. Also, it would be unfair talking about the hidden features if I don't talk about how you can hide apps on your iPhone. But first, you have to enable Face ID by going to the settings, scroll down to Face ID and Passcode menu, then enter iPhone passcode and complete the Face ID setup process. Small disclaimer, you cannot hide default applications on your iPhone, while all other apps installed from the App Store can be hidden on your iPhone. Now swipe up to go to your home screen then tap and hold the app that you want to hide. You will get a Require Face ID option, tap on it, and you will get a Hide option in the middle. Tap on it, it will trigger Face ID, and the Hide app option will appear at the bottom. Tap on it, and the app will disappear, both from the home screen and the app library. To open the app, you have to scroll down at the bottom of the app library and tap on the hidden folder. It will again trigger Face ID, and the app will appear to use. And if you want to unhide the app and bring it back to the iPhone home screen, you have to tap and hold the app and select Don't Require Face ID option. The app will then disappear from the hidden folder, but it won't appear back in the same place on the home screen. You will have to search for it in the app library and then tap and hold it to drag it back on the home screen. Also, if you try to tap and hold any default apps on the iPhone, you won't get the hide option you can only use the Require Face ID option to lock the apps on your iPhone. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to TechLoper and check out more iPhone tech perks that work. See you over there.